Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble. They've weighed in. They've warmed up. The gloves are on. In the purple corner, Mr. Uh, Mr. Leave, Nigel Farage. In the red corner, the Remain man, Andrew Adonis. Nigel, how are you feeling? Good. Um, I, you know, obviously it's going to be a hell of a battle here this morning. Um, but I think I've got truth on my side <laughs> and 17.4 million people. How you doing, uh, Well, I think I've got the tide of events on my side. Uh, the Prime Minister's imploding. There's no deal that's going to go through. The last man standing is going to be the people's vote. OK, without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's, let's start with round one. Deal or no deal? Nigel Farage, do you fear no deal? No. I spent 25 years campaigning for a free trade deal, um, and that was easily achievable. But the Prime Minister never even asked for it. We got the clue, I think, at uh, her speech when she talked down in Florence about a close and special relationship. So given there isn't time now to do a, a free trade deal, let's leave on WTO terms. Let's apply to the WTO itself, which means we can probably carry on tariff-free uh, for the next couple of years anyway. And it's the only way now, it's the only way we can deliver the Brexit result. Well, I, I, well, the problem that Nigel's got is he's been betrayed, essentially, by the Conservative Party, which is not going to back no deal. There's almost certainly a majority in the House of Commons next Tuesday for Yvette Cooper's proposal, which is to extend Article 50, a longer negotiating period, and rule out no deal. So what Nigel will do in that period, if he sets up his new party and, and, and seeks to mobilise, will be to campaign against the Conservatives, which he's spent most of the last 20 years doing. It'll be an, a oh, kind of Labour. civil war. Don't worry about It'll that. Be a civil war. No, 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 we, no, 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 we'll no. clean up, we'll you clean up, promised. Nigel, as, as, you, and, as you, you and the Conservatives you, go for each you, other. Do you know something? We'll do fine. That was the mistake. In, in, in that, was the mistake. In the that was the mistake that Ed Miliband made in 2014 and 15. UKIP, he thought, when I was leading it, would hurt the Tory party. And in fact, what we saw in 2015 was UKIP costing Labour seats all over yeah, the country. The and don't forget, hang on, there's five million people out there who voted for Corbyn in 17, who voted Brexit in 16. The idea that it's just the Tories that are split on this is nonsense. Yeah, but the big mistake in politics always is to think that the future is a rerun of the past. The big difference now, which is the why, poli way, why politics is moving, is that people can see what Brexit would mean. The government has told them what <laughs> Nigel's no-deal Brexit would mean. Six weeks of medical supplies, a oh, big hit to our trade, yes. a hard border oh, in Ireland. That is the reason why. It's all you can do, That is it? the reason. Threaten, threaten, that, threaten. It's, it's, threaten. it's the government who said this, and Nigel. What's happening it's not is me. It's the government that said it. You know, and as people can see that, the House of Commons will vote against that next Tuesday, which is the reason why there is not going to be any no-deal Brexit. All you talk about is Westminster. No, all you're talking about is what people within a square no, mile I, where I, we are. I, I tell you what, I'm out I'll give you some advice, right? This is what they say Get out and meet some real people. I, I, Let's, you and I go together I to do, the north of England I, and we'll visit a few working men's clubs and go around the place. And what you'll see, actually, is there's now a growing body of support out there in the country behind a no deal Brexit because you've been touring around the country I, people I, want to I, leave I'm, out, I'm out, of the, out around the country the whole time I've, I've been in Sunderland and Gateshead and Newcastle all these places what do I hear there are people who support your view Nigel let's be clear it's growing there are people who support your view but the majority are not with you the majority either want to stay or they are deeply concerned at what's going to happen to their jobs I don't know where and their you're, livelihoods I don't know where you're going in, in, in Sunderland in your, in your, a very in expensive your, restaurant in, in your I'll take you down the working man's yeah. club okay. right? well, I, I'm, I'm happy to go with you yeah, Nigel I'm happy to go with you and we'll have this big debate why don't why Many, uh, many listeners of this podcast don't understand. Why do you not like the idea of Brexit, Andrew Dennis? Why is it not a good thing to claw back powers from all these un unelected officials in mm. Brussels and give them to elected people like yourselves or Nigel if you became an MP and let yeah. them do well, things and then actually, sack him every five years? Actually, to give Nigel his due, he was elected. He's been a member of the European Parliament for 20 years, which is why he's got a European pension of £73,000 no, 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 when no, no, he retires. No, 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 he has been will elected. You, will you stop let's, making be up this idea, numbers? Let's be clear. This or, or, or idea or that the European... Is everything you do is the is the is the is, European is, is everything Nigel, right? is the European Parliament elected or not? Were you elected? Uh, four times. Yes. yes. So it is elected. So let's get rid of this non-elected business. The biggest the issue, the biggest not issue, no, the biggest issue the is is the European Union a good deal for us? And it's a fantastic deal for our trade. It protects our jobs, and it's obviously not the sensible but thing the for idea us to, to crash out with no decent trade giving, deal. Of, the idea of, of giving back power to. To, um, um, to, to elected people. Why is that not a good thing? Uh, we, we haven't taken power away from elected people. It's Parliament that makes all these decisions. It's the elected people who make them. The question with sovereignty is what do you do with it? You know, as Michael Heseltine famously said, the only person who is completely sovereign is the person who's alone on a desert island and can do what they like and they are poor and they might not survive the night. OK, round two. Andrew Dennis, should we leave or extend on March 29th? 
Well, it's now looking inconceivable that we will leave on the 29th of March because whether uh, we have a, a new negotiation, which is what Nigel wants, uh, or whether uh, we uh, have a referendum, which is which is what I want, either of those will involve an extension of the. But how will that happen? Period. Because a motion passed next week, the event group is a motion to uh, an amendment to an motion. It has no yeah, legal also, force. No, there'll also be legislation that follows. But the key point. But the is government that, won't, won't, won't allow no, time for Theresa May will, will do it. There's no way that Theresa May is going to do this. I have a, uh, from the all my conversations with ministers. They are not going to do a crashing out trashing people's jobs. But she six has said 29 times in Parliament she will not extend Article The fi- only 50. thing that we know about Theresa May is that when she says categorically she's not going to do something, it happens. I mean, that is the story of the last three years. Remember, and she said there wasn't going to be an election. There was an election. And, and how- she, she said that she wasn't going to do a deal yeah. with the EU, which involved... Uh, the backstop in Ireland. She did the deal. And how long? How long? So that's not. But what about your promises? Happen. You're always. I, mean, I, I agree that with you. Right. Chris, uh, Theresa May constantly contradicts things that she's promised in the past. But what about your promises as a, as a Labour Party too? What about the entire political class? You know, we held a referendum back in 2016, and everybody was told, "This is your decision, and we will abide by the result." It couldn't have been clearer. We then had a general election, where the two main parties both promised the electorate vote for us and we will take you out of the European Union. We then extraordinarily had a vote in Parliament and 498 MPs voted to trigger Article 50, which meant, as you well know, two years from a date you trigger it, you leave with or without a deal. So at yeah. every single... No, 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 there, there are no buts. There, there, there are no buts here. This is about... Yeah, well, well, there is a missing link, and the missing link is between the people right. of this country and yeah. their leaders. No, 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 and the that you are treating... The missing you are, link is people's jobs. I'm bored with that. You told no, us that at the time of the Euro. Are you bored with people's jobs? What's going to happen to them? I heard this from your lot at the time of the Euro. I heard it from all of them at the time of the ERM. You've been wrong about all of this stuff in the past. You can make your mm. negative economic predictions, mm. and I can make well, positive they're, they're, they're ones. But what true. matters? They're coming what, true at the moment in well, terms of jobs, at, investments. Look, yeah, if you look at British exports, they're the highest they've ever been. You, know, it's, it, if you look it, at people it, in work; it's the highest it's ever been. Do you think we look at wages? Three point three percent. Income ten percent lower than they were ten years ago. This is not about economic. This is a terrible ten years. This is not about economic. This is about democracy. This is about. Do you think did people who voted leave? Uh, also vote for being a bit poorer over the next 10 years, which, is what, which is what these no, 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 Treasury no. forecasts say. Right. Do they my, mind my, that? Okay. My forecasts are they be a lot richer. All right? No. He hey, says well, poorer. Well, I say richer. How long? Chris, you cannot, nobody, but nobody can predict the economic future. All right? Nobody can. But what you can talk about is the trust that exists in our country between mm. ordinary folk and the system within which we live. And I would argue that at no point in my life has trust in politics and our system of government ever been lower. And that is because people like Lord Adonis here are willfully betraying the Brexit vote. And that's two, your risk, two, isn't it? You're, you're two, damaging trusted politics by extending. Two, two thirds of people say that they now want a referendum on Theresa May's deal. That's about trust and that's about democracy. <laughs> that's where we are. On the business of the Labour Party, because this is an important point, what we've said all the way through is we will not vote for a deal that is worse in terms of our trade and our jobs than the existing customs union and the existing single market. And the Prime Minister herself, Theresa May, has said that her deal will mean, and these are her words, less market access as a result of her deal because we're withdrawing from the customs union and the single market. Less market access means selling fewer of our goods in Europe, fewer jobs and worse paid jobs. That is the reason, that is the reason why we need a referendum on this deal. 85% of the global the economy, 85% of the global economy, and that figure grows every year, is outside the Eurozone. So, all right? things, so what we do... So things are going to be worse. So what we do, so things by are cutting worse, ourselves... still 15%. By cutting ourselves off from the 15% of the world, who regulate our businesses, who take away our competitiveness, we're opening ourselves up to a big, new, exciting world. But again, we're back to this point. You and I can talk well, economics. You and I can talk no, economics. Well, do, do you know what? Totally I'm very big interested big. in hearing oh. all these people saying how bad it would be for us. People who've never, ever bought or sold a good or a service or ship stuff around the world. I have. And I'll tell you people, something. People, and I'll tell you something. People who run these companies, they don't want to leave the European Union, well, Nigel. The They've people, been very clear. The people, who run, the people, the people who, run who run the multinationals, Toyota, Hitachi, the people who run the multinationals, the of course, want to keep things as they are because it's a great system to crush the so, little man so, and woman. So there are. So this is jobs, about. This is about if, our position. These jobs go. This is about. You don't mind if these jobs go then? We're going to employed by Nissan we're, and Sunderland. We're, we're that's, have, that's okay. We're going to have because, a lot more jobs. Because they're going to crush all these little well, people. If you remember, the man who told us if we didn't join the Euro that they might leave Sunderland, well, he's currently, I think, in prison. But never mind. We've heard all these threats mm. before. Stop trying to threaten us. Get back to the key mm. point. Why do you willfully 
want to overturn the greatest democratic exercise in the history Andrew of Dennis, this I'll answer, country. Answer that the question. The, the, the are people, you overturning Brexit by the, having an extension? The people should decide this. Well, they I did. Think no, because they never saw the deal. It's only in the we last... We didn't vote for it, we voted to last, leave. It's only in the last two months we've seen the deal. Now we can see them. This we is, should we, we should twisting. do the referendum and then I will twisting. be I will be in the pub in Gateshead with this is, with, this is twisting with okay, Nigel honest. debating this. Now we're on round three: cross party or party political talks. Do you first, uh, Nigel Farage? Why don't you work more closely with ERG and sort out Brexit and get, get bring together the, the right on Brexit? Again, huge mistake. This huge mistake to think that Brexit is about being on the right of politics. It isn't. It isn't. It's as much about the centre and the left as well as five million Labour voting Brexiteers prove. So, now what I've tried to do, uh, Chris, in terms of bringing people together, is through Leave Means Leave, you know, a genuinely cross-party organisation, I've been working with people from the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, but perhaps as significantly, you know, some figures from business, yeah. some figures more from entertainment, and what we're doing is we're showing Leave voters, we haven't packed up and gone home, but we're also, and it's a shocking thing to say, but we're preparing for the worst eventuality. If this betrayal becomes complete, we have to be ready to fight again. And I'll work with anybody within reason well, uh, to I, achieve this. I saw last week with the Leave Means Leave rally with Ian Duncan Smith, Esther McVeigh on stage yeah. there. Do you think that you will peel off Brexiteers from the Tory party if there's no if there's no Brexit and we'll thought there'll be a, a, new, a new party formed? The well, Brexit party well, has well, been launched? Well, well, they're two different issues. You know, one is, how do you prepare to fight another referendum if this result gets betrayed? And I think Leave Means Leave is clearly the right vehicle to do that. Your question about a political party is a separate question. I look, you know, I mean, I've been involved in, in, in party politics, in UKIP politics for a quarter of a century, I have no intention of ever doing this again. Uh, but we may find that if the Adonises of this world manage to stop Brexit from happening, that we are contesting the European elections on the 23rd of May this year, and we need a vehicle to do that. Now, will people leave the Labour and Conservative parties to come and do it? I don't know. Mm. But it doesn't really matter. Mm. Whether they do or not doesn't really matter. If you give the electorate a clear choice and the Brexit party whatever it would be would be clearly to, for, for a clean break the other party who'd do well would, would be the Lib Dems because the Lib Dems mm -hmm. would be f would, would be fully and in. Labour's nowhere and Labour no and one knows what they stand for and really. you your party is at sea on Brexit well the, big, the biggest political movement in the country at the moment is the movement for the people's vote and we've got 700,000 people on the streets of London not before true Christmas. it was quarter of a million so wasn't it, it? it, was, it was, lies lies seven, lies it was 700,000 it wasn't which is, the GLA numbers were less than that and, and it does indeed draw people from across, <laughs> uh, across parties indeed a lot of people who formerly voted leave two years ago now want a, a vote now that they can see the deal now that is turning in into a massive campaign, which there will be for a referendum, I hope, in, in a few months' time. And as I say, it will bring together people from Labour, the Conservatives... 14 months. The government said 14 months. Oh, that's a load of nonsense. Mm. You could organise a, a referendum in a few months. Mm. So that, that's what's happening at the moment. Uh, what I do agree is that this is no longer happening inside political parties. It's going beyond political parties. And that's a good thing, actually, because the parties haven't been great at uh, linking in with the people. But why is it that this has been so successful? Because people do feel betrayed. All the promises that were made uh, three years ago, you know, the 350 million a week there was going to be for the NHS, and Theresa well, the May's agreed 39 a 39 billion. billion. There's a 39 billion deal that we're going to have to pay the EU for, for leaving. You know, they said there were going to be 7 million Turks coming. That's uh, clearly not happening. Well, that was Nigel Farage saying that. As people can see the lies, they want this referendum, and that's why the biggest political movement I, in the country I've made now some is for people. I've made some huge mistakes. What's your worst mistake? I mean, I mean, what's I your worst up, mistake? Well, I said up to a quarter of a million people come, could come from Romania, and I apologise, it's nearly half a million, um, and going up rapidly. Uh, you know, you, that? you know the big the big lie has been fifty years of lies, telling us it's just a common market. It won't really affect us. Even this week, we've seen the moves towards a European army becoming more and more advanced. And I just wish those that want us to remain would be more honest. This is the United States of Europe. Everybody in it has to join the euro, and, and that's the way forward. Now, if you want that. Be honest with the people, but at no point in 50 years has your side been straight with the British public. Yeah, but actually what's coming on now, which is, is the really significant thing happening in politics at the moment, is that is that uh, Nigel Farage is being honest. He does want to come out of everything which is to do with Europe. Theresa May is not. I what she is trying to do... I always did. Yeah, what, what she is trying to do is to be pursuing a Brexit policy without actually doing Brexit, which is what she's doing with her deal. And that is splitting the Conservative Party, and I think that is what will lead to a he, referendum. He, here's the one and really in that interesting referendum thing. then, the two of us will then have the straight fight. Is our destiny better by working with Europe, trading with them openly, and having a, a, a proper set of relations that mean that we have better security and stability? Or is it crashing out, as Nigel wants, well, and wrecking our economy and d endangering our security? That is, is the real but, but what, choice But what is interesting now. here is I, I do detect there's a change going on out there. 
that you know how tribal our system has been. So for the last hundred years, you know, you can knock on doors, and there's no point making political arguments. We're Labour. We're Conservative. It's almost been that's a, it's been realigning. A, it's been a tribal type of thing that we've been Labour since the First World War or whatever it is. And all right, you know, what, now and again the SDP come along and chip away at that, or the Liberals have a good time, or UKIP come along. But basically, we've been in these two tribes. What I'm now beginning to witness is people are now identifying as Leavers or Remainers ahead of being Labour or the Conservative. Parties, the parties and might I, move towards well, reflecting well, I, that. Well, Chris, I, you know, I think this. I mean, Brexit was an earthquake uh, in the British political system, but I suspect there are some big aftershocks to come. We okay. could see British politics reshaped by this. Actually, I, I agree that things are being reshaped. The thing I find most uh, significant as I go around the country is young people. People under the age of 30 overwhelmingly want to stay in the European Union because they feel that their future sure lies. Oh, yeah, all the, all, the, all, all the meetings and contacts I have and all the polls show it as well. Mm. I'm very strongly in favour of there's going to be a referendum this year in giving votes to 16 and 17-year-olds okay. because their future is more <coughs> at stake than anyone's. And I can assure you, they remain, not leave. Round four. Andrew Jonas, what will the question be in your referendum? Well, re whether we want to stay in the European Union is, is the option that I You refight the 16 argument, uh, do you? No, well, the, the question then is, is really on the other side. Is, are they going to have two options? Are they going to have the Theresa May leave option and the, uh, and the, and the hard leave yeah. option where we leave everything? No deal, yeah. deal or, or remain. Or, or, or are they just going to have one option? Now, I'm happy for them to fight that out between them because there's clearly a massive fight going on on the leave side at the moment as to whether they should have one option or two options. I'm very no, clear no, that there should be a remain option. There should be a remain option. There's no fight so at that's all. all. There's well, no fight at all. We don't want well, a second right. referendum. We don't need yeah. a second referendum. No, We've you, had a referendum no, and you, you, you promised know this us. Is happening, and you is, what promised us. What do you want? Do you Why want have you broken your promise? Do you want one option or two Why options? Why have you broken your promise? Have you lied I, to the people? I haven't broken any, any promise at well, all. Your party said we'll abide by the result no, and now no. you won't. We said only if the deal was as good as the existing That's single market. That's not what you said in 2016. In the 2017 election we said that we would only vote for a deal that was as good as the single market and the customs union because we're not prepared to trash people's jobs. But the party voted to leave, didn't it? In Provided we got a deal that was as good as the single market and the customs union because we're not prepared to trash people's jobs what the deal that Theresa May has done does trash people's jobs she herself has says we'll have <coughs> less access to European markets and more access to 85% of and the that, global market and that, well, we're it's no, really rather exciting no, isn't it because we have no deals Liam Fox has not done any trade deals we don't have any he further can't, access can't, he, well, he hasn't done any he was, remember he was going to have 40 ready for signature the whole world one, one may, second have, past may have the whole world is queuing up the whole world it is fantasy they all do it's complete fantasy Australia Japan, Japan. You, they're all queuing. Yeah, so why are the deals not ready? Why are the deals not ready what? then, Nigel? Well, he, the answer to his question first. Why are the deals not ready? If, if they're all queuing up to trade with us, we're not why allowed they? to do them because we're part you of could, your blessed you European Union. You can stop negotiating them now. Uh, well, if I'm afraid and, and that Monsieur Barney has made it it's very clear we're not allowed to do it. And we must bow no. down to our unelected no. masters and masters. Well, the people you want to run our country. What a shower they are. I thought you were telling us you were taking back control. I mean, you Juncker running this country. God help us. If you can take back control, you can certainly negotiate a trade deal. Nigel, the fact that there has not been a trade deal so far is because, because you've been well, incapable of taking it. Yeah, to be fair, they can't, they can't sign to leave. What's your question, Nigel Farage? If Andrew Jones gets his way, there's delay, then MPs vote in two, in two or three months to have a referendum. What's your best question? Is it leave remain? Is it well, deal or no see, deal? I mean, I mean, to be honest, you know, why should remain be on the ballot paper? Because that we settled. I mean, if you wanted to have another referendum on how we leave, I guess you could have that. I, I, think, I think it's a terribly bad idea. Mm. Uh, I think it would give yet more uncertainty, etc., but, but that's the real question. If you have a second referendum, should Remain even be on the ballot paper? Mm. But and, what, I, and, I, and I don't think it should. Yeah. What we've now had is an acceptance that there are different leave options, and that is going to be at the heart of this referendum, is do you go with Theresa May's deal, well, which she right. says is essential to avoid a hard border in Ireland, not to trap well, you, you view, not, 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 not to endanger our trade and so on, or do you go for Nigel Farage's option, which is to crash out of everything and do huge damage How, to so, the So do you, do you want a United States of Europe, Andrew? I want to remain in the European Union. And join the Euro. No, and I be, don't want to join and, no. and be part of the European Army. No, you're doing the scare And now. be part of the... No, no, no. no. We have a and, perfectly good... And be part of the European... No. You're making all this up. We're, we're, we're not in the Euro. I'm making the European Army up, you know, Have you noticed that... I'm not, making it up, am well, I? We don't have to join any European Army. There's no proposal really? out there for a European Army at the moment. <laughs> God no, help us. Stop no, lying no, to everybody. That's not true. You can't there is yourself, no you European army. Yourself, there is no European that's army. Good. Fully operational by not. 2025. Had, had, had you, this week, had you, wasn't fully you, operational by 2025. Had you, had you noticed we're not a member of the Euro? We you still know. carry around
around coins which have the Queen's head on. Well, sure we are you not want... in the Euro. And no well, one sure is you want us to, to join the Euro. No, I don't. I'm very happy with the position we're in at the moment. What, get, being governed by unelected bureaucrats? We get bureaucrats. the best of both worlds at the moment. We get all the advantages of, 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 of trade engagement with Europe, which is vital because half our trade goes to Europe. No, it doesn't. It does. No, uh, it doesn't. Half our trade can, goes can, to can, Europe. Can, can, so can, we have the benefits of that. One, one, one but, but we're not forced into the... How, uh, how would a second vote... If, we don't want to if you won the second vote, 52-48 or 54-46, a narrow win for Remain, how would that settle... This debate. We're, we're still in a red lion pub in after, ten years' time, having a row about it. After the last three years, I don't think it would be narrow. I think that, the, like 1975, when people were face to face with, uh, you know, the real. But if it is narrow, leaving, I mean, how big I, I is it? Be a big majority. If it's 60 because, 40, because even, the still, they won't end the argument, will it? It will carry on. I know this is going to carry on for as long as as, as what uh, we're alive. Uh, uh, until carry on. until the European Union blows up, and, and because, yeah, because the other thing that's going on here is you've got these maniacs like like Macron and Merkel pushing for a full United States of Europe as quickly as they possibly can. The rebellion is growing across Europe. Italy now poses the biggest threat to the future of the European Union, far bigger than we pose. Um, and fascinatingly, it's the youth of Europe. It's the under 30s of Europe rebelling in country after country after well, country. Well, they want to stay in the European Union here. Uh, uh, the under 30s Andrew, overwhelmingly the, want to stay in the European We are the European only Union country here. where the under 30s appear yeah, to be you, strongly pro-EU. Why, why do you think that is? An education system that frankly has not taught them critical okay. thinking. Uh, but that's a separate I debate. I see, I see. Brainwashing. I see. But the, the key point about it is that Miss, Mrs. Merkel is not going anywhere. No, she is. Well, Germany she is going is still soon. There. Yeah, no, but the, 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 the centre ground in Germany is yes, not yeah, going to break okay. up the European Union. Now, round five. Finally, Andrew Donis, when should Theresa May quit? As soon as possible, because she's such a disaster. I mean, uh, she's the worst. And, and who's your ideal leader? Time. Who's your ideal leader? Uh, to take us through into this, uh, to staying in the EU, as, as you well, hope. The Conservatives. And Amber Rudd or something? Well, a, a, anyone who can actually manage the process of calling and supervising a referendum. That's what the country needs at the moment. So whoever that is, I'm happy with whoever the Conservatives yeah. provide, who will do the will of Parliament and the will of the people to see that there is a referendum. Michael Farage, who, well, who would your best, best, well, best bet if it weren't Theresa May? There's no demand for a second referendum out there, that's, that's for sure. Uh, I, anybody who has the guts and courage to recognise that as we sit here in the red line, the legislation is clear. We have a referendum act that's in place. We are leaving in 64 days' time if the government has the will to just stand there and say, we will defy all those that want to betray Brexit. So somebody with guts, and I don't care who it is. Boris Johnson? I don't care who it is, as long as they've got the guts to do Are this. we witnessing the end of the Tory party if they don't leave on the 29th of March? Oh, I think it's pretty catastrophic for them, mm. uh, but I think it's equally pretty serious for Labour in some parts of the country. I, I think it is and catastrophic for the Conservatives because the, the party is in the, in the throes of splitting at the moment is, what, is what's happening. It's a bit like the Corn Laws uh, which led to, the, to their last big split which was on a big economic issue like this. So I think that is happening. I think what will happen in due course as, as the country rallies to a, a new future in Europe is that Labour, provided we're clear that that's where we should go. I don't go, know what you're smoking, Andrew, we will then, I want some of it. We will then, we will then, some we will then, the happy stuff you're we, on, we will, you know. then, we will then sweep the country in due course. That's what's going to happen. But meanwhile, of course, um, <laughs> All the, all the stories are that Nigel's setting up a new party, and of course that will further split the Conservatives because there'll be three parties on the right. They are worried about Nigel Farage. They are concerned about Nigel Farage. I'm looking, I'm looking forward I, to this and new I think party. Labour, I think uh, Labour should be very, very worried too. Yeah. Very worried indeed. Not in London, but in the Midlands and the North and in those marginal the, seats. Uh, the big question though as to what's going to happen immediately, because all your listeners want to know what's happening immediately. Next Tuesday, the House of Commons votes on whether it's prepared to see no deal, mm. you know, leaving with six weeks of medical supplies and all of that. It's almost certainly going to vote against. The government will split if it doesn't vote against. There will be an extension of Article 50. So the one thing you could be sure about is we're going to be continuing this debate Will now you for stand many for election months. yourself, uh, Lord of Days? Uh, I'd, be, I'd be delighted to stand for election. I thought I was giving up politics. I was a bit like uh, Nigel. I thought that I'd had enough of it. But the, the country's in such a state at the moment that you might get forced into it. Do you feel energised? I mean, is, yeah, it, is it driving you a bit mad? All the can, well, not, of, um, no, uh, do I feel energised? Hugely energised yeah. by it. Because the whole future of the country is at stake. And it's mm. really important that we don't it have it over. It seems to me, Nigel Farage, that it's the Remainers making most noise about Brexit. Leavers are, you know, they're obviously concerned about it, but there's less well, less I passion think, on your side of the argument. Well, I think, I mean, they're incredibly well funded, obviously. Their international friends are right behind people. this campaign. We've got the people. Uh, well, not difference. really. You've got Mr. Soros, certainly. Um, and I think right. the problem with the Leavers is, I mean, when 500 MPs vote for Article 50, it was a fairly reasonable assumption on our side to think we'd done it. It was going to happen. It was difficult to believe that we could be betrayed in this way. The betrayal is close. Uh, I suspect next Tuesday will bring it even closer to being completed. And what the Leave side has to do is to regalvanise. It's doing that, I believe, through Leave Means Leave. Uh, but um, I have to say, I, I, I desperately want us to leave on March the 29th. 
Uh, no if deal. If you do, your, your political career's over. Great. Are you sure? Great. Because I, I, the betrayal means more Farage. No, 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 no. Well, it, well there's a good reason then. There's a very good reason. Uh, Guy Verhofstadt. You are, Andrew Donis. Back, back, back Brexit to get Guy Verhofstadt in the European Parliament last week said, I want Britain to stay, but Farage to go. So there we are. What I want is us to stay in the EU, but through a democratic process, which is what we're about to go through now, because it looks as if we're going towards a, a, a new referendum. And if we do so, and we resolve this issue, I think then the whole centre of gravity will shift to the Labour Party. What are the country. odds, Andrew Farage, on leaving on... on, on March 29th. You're asking me to talk against my own book, aren't you, really? Uh, <laughs> I No, look, I, Chris, I've been the most pessimistic of the Brexiteers uh, for some time, and I I think that extension of Article 50 right now is the most likely outcome, unless, unless she's able to get something on the backstop. And then I think, uh, you know, there's 118 Tory MPs, m not all, but most of them strong Eurosceptics. They could say, do you know, even though this deal is ghastly, at every level. Uh, if we don't get out of the European Union, our whole democratic system is going to be hijacked by the Adonises. So, it's so, saved there, is, by that. so yeah. there is a chance, yeah. there is a chance that if she can get something on the backstop, and I did notice yesterday Monsieur Barnier being a bit more grown up mm. about the Irish border issue. So there is a chance that we get Mrs May's deal, we leave, albeit it's Brexit in name only. Uh, but I I suspect extension is the most likely, I, I sadly. Don't, I, I, don't, I, I don't think that uh, the European Union is going to betray Ireland, and nor should they betray Ireland, because the worst thing we could do in the United Kingdom at the moment would be to have a hard border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Bombs went off in Derry last Saturday. Mm. There is a recurrence of terrorism taking mm. place in Northern Ireland at the moment. We don't, do not want anything that gives uh, gives more juice to the, uh, the paramilitaries. So I don't think that they'll change the backstop, and nor should they. The big issue, if they don't, is what then happens in the House of Commons. And uh, I, I, though I think some uh, Tory MPs uh, will rally to Theresa May, it's not going to be enough. So I don't think she's going Unless to Unless the backstop's changed. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be changed. Yeah. So what I think we're looking at is a continuing political crisis that will end in the only way we can resolve it, because it's the last option yeah. available, which is a referendum. And what should be the basic choice in that what, referendum? So you would ignore us again? Is, no, would, would you ignore a second no, the whole vote? The whole point about hanging a referendum is so, so we can resolve this. Like, tell and me, would you ignore a second leave vote? I didn't... Well, you, I didn't You've ignored the first no, one. I haven't done at all. What happened after the first one was two and a half years of Theresa May negotiating to produce this deal. So you would and now we can see this deal. If, if, if I'm voted to leave again, that yeah, would be... Yeah, because people would have seen what the options were. So let's leave are, with no, didn't see well, no deals were an option. That's time. why 500 MPs voted for it. It was withdrawal agreement or leave with no you, deal. Yeah, so you, let's leave you, with no if deal. If you can craft that option, I'm perfectly happy to have it on the ballot paper. Do you both foresee a time when Nigel Farage and Andrew Dennis can have a drink in a Red Lion pub and not row about Brexit? Uh, I think if we talk about things like the reform of the education system that we were on earlier, we, we might now, we, have some we, areas of agreement. There are some areas there. in which we could be civil, <laughs> yes. But, but not on your <laughs> own, bit. Andrew Donis, Nigel Farage, thanks for coming into the Red Lion pub for the Rumble in Red Lion, and please, I hope you enjoyed listening at home. Um, perhaps a handshake at the end to show it's all. For you. And to you for being a good neutral umpire. Thank you very much. Well done, Chris. Thank you.